this evening. Tonight we have, uh, for tonight's class, we have uh, Pastor Warren Rudd visiting tonight to bring the word. I want to welcome uh, Brother Warren Rudd tonight. Class, can you give him a big hand? How y'all doing, brothers? God bless you. Well, let me give you a little bit more detail about who I am. My name is Brother Warren Rudd. You know, uh, I love the title sometimes, but one thing I am is a brother. But uh, I come from Philadelphia. I'm an alumnus of Team Challenge. I'm just going to break down the resume real quick so we can get ready right to the word. The love word. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Okay. I have been through uh, close to 33 years of addiction. Okay, my addiction manager, I mean, uh, counselor for Team Challenge for two years. I worked at numerous ministries. I helped in this room. I came down here to Alabama from Philadelphia, met my beautiful wife, started working with um, Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor, and also with Fresh Anointing. Uh, went over to Alabama Teen Challenge. But I went to a church that one of my co workers invited me to. And I saw, that's why I met Brother Jordan. I saw all these men just sitting there, and I said, you know what, that's got to be a program. So I went over there and introduced myself and found out he was in the longest of Teen Challenge. Mm -hmm. And we got connected, but you know God always brings the connections. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I've been involved with this for over 20 years, and I deal with issues and addictions. My wife back there, as you see, is on the camera there. Say hello to my wife. Buddy. Hello. 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 Uh, she deals with the disabled. She has a ministry called God is Able. Now, if you put that together, it will run together as go disabled. You know, she has a heart for the disabled people in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, well, if we put our ministry together, I deal with issues and addictions, and she likes the disabled. We'll have a full ministry. Amen. We just love helping people. Amen. 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 So a lot of my years have been dealing with men such as yourself because I've been where you've been. I am not a what you call a go by the program preacher. I am a preacher that is sometimes unorthodox. I will get you ready from your world. So are you ready for me? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You can't give me an excuse. You can't give me anything that I haven't been through. I've been there and done that. But hopefully I can give you something that will help you be successful while you're here and set you on the path of righteousness toward Jesus Christ. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's about ready to come forth. I thank you that you brought me here to Canaan land again, Lord God. And uh, I thank you for Brother Mac Goldberg and Sandra Goldberg. And I thank you for Brother Jordan Mac, who saw fit to bring me up here to minister to these men of God. So let me... Be able to establish, build, and guide them with the word of righteousness. Let me walk on the word of your word, that they will be built and established and guided. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, let's say amen. 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 All right, go with me to the book of Matthew. Tonight's sermon that I prayed about the Lord is one of my, out of the thing, out of my old uh, uh, folder there. And I went right back to my archive and said, let me pull this one out. But Jordan told me we got a full house and he wants me to bring a great word here. And I'm going to try my best to do it. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 8. And my sermon tonight is going to be, Get a Attitude of Go Come Do. I'll say it again. Get a Attitude of Go Come and Do. Well, what are you talking about, brother? Well, you get ready to see it in a second. Amen? Amen? You must get an attitude to go come do if you plan to be successful. Amen? Amen. I'm going to jump ahead of myself. But let's get to the word. And honey, get ready for a screen, okay? Amen. Uh, <laughs> I don't want her to jump out of her seat when she hears this. So. It shocked me the first time I heard it. But I love it, though. All right? Let's go to Matthew 8, starting at verse 5. Yay! Yay! Amen. <laughs> I love that. Matthew 8, starting at verse 5. And when the Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of Paul, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come unto my roof, but speak the word only. Oh my goodness, I love that. Mm -hmm. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. Underline go. Then he goeth. And, and to another, come. Underline come. And he come. <laughs> and to my servant, do. Underline, underline do. To my servant, do this. And he doeth it. 
And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. Do you want Jesus to marvel at you? Amen. Are you going through Canaan land? Amen. Amen. This is Amen. an opportunity for you to get Jesus to marvel at you. This is the only person in the Bible that I saw Jesus marvel at. Well, there was another one. But there ain't too many people he marveled at. I want my Lord to marvel at me. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus heard that he marveled and said unto them, that follow, very, very, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and from the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed. Hallelujah. In the selfsame hour. Thank you, Lord. Yes. One of the things I want you to pay attention to is the go come do. Do you see a period behind any one of those words? <laughs> but each one of them are capitalized. Yes. So that tells me it's an action word. Amen. That tells me Jesus is telling you to get into work, get something going, start an action. Amen? I'm going to get revelation on it later. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Luke, the synoptic version. You know what synoptic means, right? Synoptic means three different points of view. So we're going to look at Luke's, Luke's point of view of this story. So go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Look at verse 1. Now I want you to pay attention closely to the differences in the story. Because one said heal, and I want you to see what this one says. Matthew says the servant was healed. But I want you to see what, Jesus, what Luke says about the servant. So starting at verse 1, Luke 7, and verse 1. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was there unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he said unto him, the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when, and when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loved our nation, and he has built us a synagogue. You see that? Now, Matthew, they said, the centurion went, but here they said the elders of the church went because he built him a synagogue. We're going to give you a little background in a minute. Verse 6. Then Jesus went with him. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should have been there unto my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man that is set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go. And he goeth, and to another come. And he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Hmm. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. Hmm. Verse 10. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole. Hmm. Found the servant whole. That had been saved. So one version said he was healed, and another version said he was healed. I'm going to hold off for a minute. I'm get ready to give you some revelation soon. Do you want to be just healed, or do you want to be whole? Oh, 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 amen. Because there is a difference. Amen. amen. Let me give you some background. Now, the centurion commanded a century. That is 50 to 100 men. That's why they call centurion. Centurions were the backbone of the Roman army in charge of discipline. The centurions' salaries were much higher than those of their troops. But for this centurion to have built a local synagogue represented a great financial sacrifice. The centurion was not a fully converted to Ju Judaism and thus retained some of his uncleanness as a Gentile, especially in regard to the food in his house. To invite a Jewish teacher into such a home would have been offensive under the normal circumstances. But in this case, the community elders wanted to make an exception. Amen, because he built them a synagogue. Mm -hmm. Centurions would serve in the army 20 or more years, and they were not permitted to marry. Mm. Many had illegal concubines,
but centurions who could be moved around more frequently would be less likely than ordinary soldiers to have such relationships. They often marry only after retirement. Their household would include servants, and the relationship between the centurion and the household servant sometimes grew very close, especially if they made up the entire family unit. The main thing is that the centurion demonstrates that he understands the principle of authority. Amen. Some of y'all just now getting to understand it coming down. Amen. Amen. Doing things that people, that you wouldn't do before. Get up, go to bed, move here, shut up over there, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just getting started, y'all. Y'all just don't have no idea. Anyway, centurion demonstrated to understand the principle of authority that Jesus <coughs> exercises. Roman soldiers were very disciplined and accepted rare times of mutiny, followed orders carefully. They provided the ultimate model of a discipline and obedience in the Roman Empire. Now, Jesus marveled at the centurion which is the Greek word thamosio, meaning to wonder at or to admire, to have admiration. It's time for you to get it all come to. You know, I break something down for you. If you're going to survive here and survive after this, you have to get a go come to attitude, just like that centurion. Understanding and being willing to deal with and follow authority. That's why you came here, right? Mm -hmm. You knew you were down and out. It was time for you. You said, Lord, I'm broken. Take me to a place. And he said, okay, I'm bringing you to Canaanite. Now get under authority. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, the word come, I mean the word go, has 30. Now watch this, because we think words in the Greek don't mean anything. But they're very powerful words. So I can't look up a word in the English dictionary when we study the word of God. Either it should be in Hebrew, Greek, or child Hebrew. Amen? But go has 30 different meanings in the Greek. The Greek word porneia or poiengio, to travel, remove, or to depart, to go away, to go forth, to go one's way, to go up. Now, I like this one. To make a journey, I mean, to make or take a journey and walk with it. Amen. Amen. So that go means to make or take a journey and walk with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Whew, that's powerful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew 28. We're going to look at that. To make, to go make or take a journey and walk with me. Matthew 28. And we know it's the end of the Bible there in Matthew. I got so many scriptures written here. Hope for time's sake we'll be able to do it. But let's look at verse 16. And then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, unto the mount where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some did what doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go! You, therefore, yes. and teach all nations, that means make disciples, Amen. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and look, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. But he said, you go. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm ready to go somewhere. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You understand? In other words, he's telling you to go make or take a journey with me and walk with me to make disciples. Glory. But I'm going to train you before you do it. You see, this was after you trained them. Go to Mark 16. Next book over. I do a lot of Bible scripture, gentlemen. That's why I was happy to come here to Canaan Land, because I know y'all do it too. <laughs> Look at verses 14. Mark 16, verses 14 18. What does it say? After he appeared unto the eleven, and, and they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of their heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into what? All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. 
They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. 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 So one more scripture about go. Then we're going to look at come. Go to Luke 17. I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and tell a whole lot of stories. The Lord just told me, just give me the word of God. Amen for now. So we're going to look at it. Luke 17. This is the story about the ten lepers. You ready? Now, I want you to grab this. Because if you've been where I've been through addiction and everything else, I hope you see what I'm going to see. Because the blind just have to come up. You can read the word. But can you see the word? Because I can see scripture and read it a hundred million times, but there are some times that I take that blind off and it's so real. Mm -hmm. You know, the world reads the book and says it's a good book, but you who are born again, that's Amen. Ooh, man. Amen. It's just something that makes you just, oh, nothing like it. It's nothing like it. I'd rather read the word than hear a whole lot of music sometimes. Yeah. It's music to my ears. Amen? That's right. Amen. Amen. But look at Luke 17, verses starting at verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, you see his capital up, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, that as they went, they were underlined cleansed. Thank you, Lord. Back back Hallelujah. As they went to go show their priests, they were just cleansed. So when you make up your mind to come to Canaan land, I mean, you just came to Canaan land. You just got cleansed. Come on. Thank you, Lord. And you ain't healed yet. Amen. And you ain't made whole yet. But you are cleansed because you made a right choice in your heart. Amen. Are you hearing? Amen. 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 Let's keep going. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was what? Healed. Amen. Now you see the difference, underline. Mm -hmm. Now he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice, glorified God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was oh, you got it. He was a Samaritan. So you got to understand, do you understand what a Samaritan is? He's a half-breed. He wasn't full Jewish. He was half Jew and half Gentile. And they got no respect. That's right. It was prejudice against them. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed that I sent unto the priest? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, said this stranger. Hmm. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee what? Whole. Whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. So you know what he was telling me when I looked at that in my condition? When you made up your mind to go get it right, you got cleansed through your heart. Yeah. But when you finally recognize who cleansed you, then you wish <laughs> Oh, you ain't hearing me. <laughs> then you're going to turn back and glorify God. And once he glorified God, he became whole. Now, see, you got to understand this. When I was walking cleansed, people can still see the sin on me. They can still tell I was a crackhead. They can still tell you, know, you're an alcoholic. They can still send you say sin nature. But when he turned around to be healed, he knew he was healed. The others were healed. But guess what? You saw, because leprosy, they lose a finger. Their skin gets off. Everybody's the same color. I don't care if you're a black, Chinese, Indian, whatever. Right. You get leprosy, right. you turn that ugly looking white. And I mean ugly looking white. Mm -hmm. Your nose fall off. Mm -hmm. But when he turned to give God glory, and the scripture said it made him whole, that meant his fingers grew back. Amen. That meant his skin cleared up. Amen. That meant his nose grew back. Amen. Nobody will recognize your Hallelujah. condition anymore. Amen. If you sit around here and do what you're supposed to do with a go come do attitude, they're going to be marveling at you. Who glory. did that? You can't give yourself glory. All right. Amen. Amen. The only one you can say it was Jesus. Yes. Man, then you used to look like this. Then you used, man, that used to be the so and so. No, look at him now. Mm -hmm. He got the glory of God on him. But you got to go through it. So there is a difference between just being cleansed. You see, some brothers come through here who just got cleansed and they just came to hell and they leave. 
But guess what? They're still recognizing their old condition and their old sin. But those who successful and graduate and decide to serve and come back and have a go come do attitude, you can't be recognized. Amen. Only God can change that. Do you Amen. know Amen. to this day I had a prison record? I was packing for years. And to this day, don't you know I have a job with the government? Amen. And the FBI Thank had to do an investigation. I had a secret clearance. And when the FBI came to interview me, they said, we found everything on you. But guess what? Now, the church didn't tell me this, but the FBI, he said, your past is gone. Mm. Praise everything God. About you. Yeah. The only one who will ever know anything else about your past will be us and God. Now, don't tell me God can't remove a record. They really don't. Yeah. Don't tell me God can't change a glitch on a computer. I tried. Praise, Praise God. God. Even my identity got stolen. But you know what? Had bad credit and everything else. But guess what? They can't find me nowhere in the credit matrix no longer. Mm. Child, a new yeah. beginning to me. No? Amen. 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 And to be honest, I haven't been empty since. Matter of fact, God has just been double. Matter of fact, I just got a job today. What I get? Double Hallelujah. my own salary. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all not hear me. Amen. That's because when you serve, now do the attacks come? It's how you handle the attack. Thank you, Lord. It's yes. how you handle the attack. I don't get as angry as I used to. I don't jump up in people's face no more. Amen. I just give them over to God. I just say, you see my anointing. You just angry. You only you only angry at God's glory. That's all. I'm gonna keep on serving them despite you. Amen. 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 Oh, God, no, no. Let's go to come. <laughs> now come has 39 different meanings in the Greek. Mm. Woo. The word ekihemio. Now don't give me one of these Greek words, but I got it written down here anyway. Ekiomiae, right? Which is in contrast with the Greek word hekio which means to arrive or to be present. It literally or figuratively means to come accompany, come appear, come bring, come enter, come fall out, come go, come grow, come light. See how many different meanings? Come next, come pass, come Ooh. resort. And watch this one. Come be set. Mm -hmm. mm. That's the one you got to grab. Mm. Come be set. See, when he first told you go to Canaan, he told you, come walk and take a journey with me. Mm. You cried out, Lord, I'm at my lowest low. He said, okay, I'm going to take you to a place that's going to get you right. Now go to Canaan ministry. And when you get there, be set. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Are you hearing? Yeah. Amen. When you get there, come and be set in this ministry mm -hmm. for a year. Did anybody sign paperwork that said we submit to this ministry for yes. a year? Because I know they put you through the ringer even before they let you in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when you signed it, you weren't making a vow to uh, uh, Brother Gober or, or Brother Jordan. You made a vow unto God. Amen. Amen. And God doesn't delight in fools. This is off my page. Go to Ecclesiastes <laughs> chapter 5, verse 4. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. This is not on my page. But I have to tell you this. So if you think you made a vow to Canaan land when you made that vow. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay? You made a vow unto God, just like if you got married. For better or for worse, for richer or for poor, to a death do its part. Uh-oh. Stop. Uh -oh. <laughs> Amen. So don't be talking about, you know, I can leave when I want to know. Okay, go ahead. Devil waiting for you right past that sign out there yeah. called yeah. Canaan Land Ministry. He waiting right beyond it. Anybody who leaves. Without graduating, he's waiting on you. Ah, I'm going to bite you in the butt. Uh, Believe me, I know. And some of y'all, you waiting for you on the day you graduate. I don't know how you can go a whole year and just want to party the moment you walk down the aisle. I don't get that. Because no okay. your heart wasn't really here. And your heart wasn't really with Jesus. You did it for an ulterior reason. If you're here for your mama, your kids, your wife, you're here for the wrong reason. Amen. 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 Right. You're, you're setting yourself up for relapse. I'm telling you right now, you better be here for it. This is the only time, God, take me on. This is the only time you get an opportunity to be selfish. Amen. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yep. God doesn't like selfishness, but when He says, I'm going to clean you up, this is the time yeah. He gives you to be selfish about your own self. I don't care how many times Mama called, I ain't coming home. That's right. Okay, how many times I ain't coming home? I was a mess when I was home. Why do you need me there now? <laughs> That's right. Give me a year to get it right. Well, they got a job for you. The baby needs diapers. You got to know that's the demon trying to get you out of here. He'll use anybody he feel like it. 
Because you decide to stand up and be a man of God, that year is going to go like that. Amen. Amen. Right. You hear what I'm saying to you, Joe? Yeah. It's going, before you blink, it's going to run. <laughs> it does, too. Yeah. But if you leave before time, Amen. Ecclesiastes 5. Right. Don't go. You won't miss your favor and miss your blessing. I don't know who that was for, but I